CETA's mandate now, they've continued the development agency within the Department of Foreign Affairs, but the mandate of CETA has shifted from poverty alleviation to promotion of Canadian opportunities and poverty alleviation. So this, it was a pilot project with Barrett Gold and Rio Tinto and a, a bunch of big gold, big mining companies. And uh, not every development organization agreed to work on this program. Oxfam refused, but World Vision went into a partnership. Now, the money went to the NGOs, not to the large mining companies, but the, the, the notion of it, I think, is antithetical to the goals of CETA. If those companies want to provide money to development organizations to help them do community work, I don't think that's a problem. But I think if you use the limited amount of money that we have in aid dollars that's supposed to be for poverty alleviation, it shouldn't require twinning with Canadian corporations operating overseas. We should give you know, those companies have enough money if they want to do a project with World Vision or uh, Save the Children or any of the company, any of the larger NGOs, they can do that. Uh, the other thing that's worried me about mining companies too has been, and this is in, in general, not just Canadian mining companies. But because of these investor state treaties, uh, there have been some very, very bad decisions. And this one does involve a Canadian mining company. Let me try to remember the name of all the companies involved. It was a suit in which Ecuador ended up lo losing billions of dollars in, and uh, I don't know how many of you read the last householder that I mailed to every house with its description of investor state treaties. This decision came in after that and went out to the, to the mails. But, Ecuador, I think it was a, a landmark decision in that I think Ecuador lost, had a judgment against it for seven billion, certainly in the billions. And what had happened is that they'd gone into a, a, a contract with a mining company, and under the terms of the contract, if that company sold any portion of its resource rights within Ecuador to another company without getting the permission of the Ecuadorian government, then that voided the contract. They weren't allowed to do that under contract law. I'll try to make this, this is a crazy story. The, the, the mining company, which was based in the US, sold a huge chunk of its resources to an Alberta company. So that's the only Canadian connection. So Ecuador said, you've just voided the contract, leave the country, our contract with you is over. And it was interesting because usually on these arbitration panels, which are just a couple of lawyers in a hotel room who make the decision, Usually they all agree, so it was rare to have a split decision. It was two to one, so obviously the, the dissenting voice lost. The, the majority of the two people who were arbitrating this, who agreed with the, they agreed with the company. They said it didn't matter that they, that they agreed that in terms of the contract, the company violated the contract. They agreed that under the terms of the contract, the consequence of selling resources to a third party company in Canada was to void the contract and give Ecuador the right to say you have to leave the country.